Shall I find the place? Go. Point and click around. Oh, it buzzes when it buzzes on. That's cool. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we really wanted to see how we could. Um, uh, yeah, how we could deliver tools for taxonomists that weren't just another browser tab in a very crowded browser window, which is the experience that I had during COVID. Everything that I did seemed to be through a browser. That, that became a bit frustrating. So we prototyped some tools to streamline how we could use digitized specimen data. And we tried to tried to build that in an open way through uh, through submitting it to this to this program, which at the time was called Open Life Sciences, but it's now called Open Seeds. Um, so we, we tried to build this project in, in quite an open way. We designed it around a local working environment so people can choose how they organize their data themselves. And crucially, that they were open to choose their own working practices. We didn't try to impose a, a working practice upon them. We gave them easy access to a lot of digitized data. But we tried also to, to use the things that work well within open science and digital science generally. So we, uh, for example, we didn't try and write our own systems that dealt with bibliographic data, but we tried to interface with things like Zotero that, that, were, that were well used and well documented and supported in, in, a, in a kind of a wider sphere than just biodiversity science. And we submitted it to this program where we, we learned a lot about how to design a, a project and how to build it in, in the most open and inclusive way. So one of the really crucial distinctions that this project uh, makes, and, and I found this really useful to, to learn about, is the kind of recognizing what kinds of open there are. So we, we, we hear the phrase open a lot, and we'll all hear it tons this week. But they make the distinction between open by default, which could be kind of a passive kind of open. Um, and certainly some of the things I've done in the past have been, have been this way. So throw out the code on GitHub, and then it's just a bit like a shrug, like, yep, yeah, find it there. Well, there's this very active kind of open, which is open by design, where you're very explicit about what your aim is with the project, what your roadmap is going to be, how people can contribute to it, what kind of behavior you would expect in that project. So, you know, uh, if there are any, um, any difficulties or that, how, how that will be resolved, kind of a bit like we've got a code of conduct for this meeting this week what the decision making process will be, where you can submit issues. Um, so you've got a whole set of documented explicit um, information and behavior and metadata about the project and how, how you can become part of it. So it's like, as well as find all our code on GitHub, it's got all these, all these pointers with it. And I chose this picture of the door like quite, quite deliberately in that yeah, that door is open, but uh, frankly, I wouldn't feel comfortable walking through it because it looks like something from a horror film. So um, I'm sure there's some code repositories on GitHub that are a bit like that. And uh, yeah, technically you can you can contribute to it, but you really don't know what's what's going to be on the other side. So thinking about how you document this for your project was that was really useful for me. Another thing they help us with is. Uh, in laying out your project, uh, kind of try and lay it out on a single page. So they use this, and it's an adaption from um, uh, a document that Mozilla use in their, in their open leadership program. So you kind of try and go around and think, fundamentally, what problem am I trying to solve? What solution do I, uh, do I propose to solve it? What metrics you'd use? That, that would help you identify whether that solution really is fixing that problem and what resources you would need to, to enact that solution. So that's all, all the kind of product half of the, of the, of the project, which is, this is on the, on the left-hand side towards me. But then more than half of the things you're trying to document are the, the community that would help you build that project and sustain it in the long term. Um, so the kind of profiles that you expect for people to participate in your project and crucially where you would talk to them so what channels, uh, what channels you would speak to them with. And same for users, like who you expect to use your, your product and how you would talk to them, what channels you would use to talk to them. 
and then in the in the top right, you kind of finish there with working out whether what, whether what you propose to do is it really is unique, or whether you should be really throwing your weight within a within a project that exists already. Um, we've used that kind of layout in the the digital extended specimen discussions as well. So there'll be a, a talk on that uh, tomorrow, I think. Uh, this is a kind of example of where we we talk to some of the users and and what's the kinds of things they do. And uh, again, this came out of COVID, where we really saw that when the when the um, scientists came back to the herbarium, they really enjoyed again working on these big benches where they could lay out all the specimens rather than just look at them digitally. And we wanted to see whether we could affect this kind of interaction with specimens, this kind of laying them out and mixing and matching them, whether we could do that digitally. And we built this kind of a uh, prototype where you can lay out the specimens on a whiteboard and drag them around. So here, this is just showing uh, this is the the notebook software. It's been populated with a load of specimens, and the users dragging some specimens from the left hand side onto this whiteboard thing, and uh, they can drag them around based on uh, how they see them clustering up with the with the taxonomy that they understand. It's also an example of where in the later stages of the project we hope to interface with AI approaches, but we want to keep the, the interface that people use pretty pretty standard. So we'll we'll augment it with AI, but but the the user interface will will stay pretty much the same. Uh, this is a roadmap for the project itself. So we we've uh, we kind of built this research environment but we're hoping to expand the data sources that are there. Cool, cool. Um, but we'll publish out data also to to GitHub Either as uh, either sites or to um, uh, as data packages in Darwin Core. Uh, I'll skip that one. So the open open life sciences or open seeds program, um, very much based on what Mozilla uh, proposed with their open leadership framework. It's cohort based, so it's a 16 week cohort. They've run seven and one is ongoing. Um, Kit, who is here, is uh, is running a project in, in this cohort. Uh, I'm a mentor in this cohort. Um, over, the, over the cohorts that have run, we've had 500 participants and they they range from people that have been doing the projects, like, I, like the one that I did and the one that Kit's doing at the moment, uh, experts who can who can offer their expertise and, and advice, and uh, mentors and learners. And yeah, we've had hundreds of projects, hundreds, hundreds of researchers. Chan Zuckerberg fund this um, with their through their biomedical program. But um, Open Seeds are also participating in, in NASA's Transform to Open Science initiative. Uh, I'd really recommend uh, having a look at this. The 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 things they propose are the really uh, transform the, the way you think about doing your work in the open. And I, they're really useful things, I think, to, to reflect on. And we always recognize that we need more people to participate and we need to, um, to avoid single points of failure and try to avoid people burning out. And I think this, this kind of changing in the way we work can really defend us against us, defend us against those kind of problems. So I'd encourage you to have a look. Um, I'm around and Kit's here for, for the week, so come and talk to us if it's something you're interested in. Thanks, Nikki. Steve, anything online?